What should expectations be for Arizona football and Arizona basketball going forward? You are Locked On Wildcats, your daily podcast on the Arizona Wildcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for keeping it locked on Wildcats. I'm your host, Mike Luke. This show is brought to you today by FanDuel. Check it out. Uh, FanDuel, place your first $5 bet and get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. All right, we are going to talk Arizona football and Arizona basketball this show and about what uh, where, where everything is right now with Arizona football. Now, listen. Uh, eight games into the season, there's no other way to put it that Brent Brennan uh, so far has been an unmitigated disaster. Um, Arizona is three and five. They look absolutely uh, void of any form of identity. And I think the thing that's even more frustrating for fans is that it appears that there was no offseason plan to get an identity. You know, when asked about, you know, what what are you trying to do offensively? Brent Brennan goes back to, well, you know, we're still trying to figure that out. I don't know how you could have inherited this team and then thought to yourself, we were just going, we're just going to try to figure it out. We'll see where it goes. And um, yeah, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't work. Um, Not only does that not work, that does not, uh, that does not uh, come close to working. You've got a once in a a generational talent in uh, uh, Tedderoa McMillan. Guys like that don't come through here. T-Mac is the best wide receiver in college football. And honestly, I'm not even sure that it's close. Uh, you got a guy that was a national freshman of the year and no Fafita. He has taken a massive step back. That is not acceptable either. Uh, you return three of five offensive linemen, including a first rounder. And get You get the gist. The problem, though, is that it doesn't seem like there was any offseason plan. And that's kind of where I'm uh, frustrated with Brennan and where I ultimately question what his overall upside here at the University of Arizona is because it does, there obviously wasn't a plan. And if there's not a plan in place, I don't know that that is incredibly short sighted to me. This was a this is a once an opportunity, once in a lifetime opportunity that was gifted to you. And you basically kind of whizzed it away. That is uh, and going forward. That doesn't give me any hope for the direction that he's trying to take this uh, this football program. And I think that is a uh, that is something that I think is uh, very, uh, very concerning. It should be concerning to about anybody out there when it comes to what is his overall plan now. Uh, as far as this season goes, they are now taking the injury excuse. Um, he was asked about uh, he was asked about it, and he said it's hard to really grade because they've been injured. Yada yada yada. Well, that excuse doesn't fly because West Virginia is a bad football team, and they were even more injured than Arizona. West Virginia came in with a game plan. They were going to do a lot of misdirections. They were going to try to play ball control, and they did just that, and they got out of here with a victory. That is, like I said, that is the problem that Arizona is encountering right now, is that it seems that everybody else has a plan, and Brent Brennan does not seem to have that plan. That is where it is. uh, That is where all of this, I think, is incredibly frustrating. Then, uh, and like we've talked about before, you generally don't get better losing a T-Mac or a Jonas Sabanea. And then after the season, you wonder what's going to happen here because, you know, somebody, and again, I got, I don't have any inside info on this, but Noah Fafita is going to be a hot commodity on the, uh, in the market. If you were to enter the portal, a school like Utah would absolutely, you know, kill to have a guy like that because he, uh, he would bring stability to the quarterback room. And grew up wanting to be a you, uh, you know, just things like that. That is a uh, that is a problem. That is a problem for Arizona. And there's going to be other players like that that would be uh, commodities if they did hit the market. Now, uh, what you know, as far as this season goes with Brent Brennan, I, you know, at this point, what if you're four and eight or you're five and seven, it doesn't really matter. This season has been a catastrophic failure, and I think the problem that you're going to have going forward is, you know, this off season, if you try to engage with the community. You're, nobody's going to want to hear it because you went out of your way not to engage this community. And now if you try to say, well, you know, we need fans at the football game. We need fans here uh, to support the guys. Yes, everybody supports the players, but they don't really support Brent Brennan. And I think that's the problem. I don't see much upside moving forward. And honestly, I don't see a coach that j- really knows what he's doing. Now, what should uh, expectations be for Brent Brennan? Well, um, not much. Uh, I don't, I don't know what else to say on that. Not much. Um, listen, 
You're not going to have a better roster. You're not going to have a more talented roster than you had this past year. And so you're probably, I think you're looking at very much of a three to five win football team next season, because I also don't think the players in the portal are going to be clamoring to come play for you just because you're not, nobody's watching out on the field and saying, man, that's a product that I want to be part of. So that's kind of what you're looking at. It's unfortunate. Now you're looking at some of the, uh, looking at some of these players that uh, you got coming in. You got a very a high four-star kid in a Terry Shelton wide receiver out of Texas. But I think the question is, are you going to be able to hold on to him? And uh, not only that, uh, if you're not going to be able to hold on to him, will, or are you going to be able to, uh, are you going to be able to be there? You know, are you going to be able to get, uh, get him? I don't know. He's visiting AM. He's going to be visiting a bunch of different uh a bunch of different places. And it's just kind of it's just kind of concerning. Um, I think the problem also with this is that uh if you couldn't capitalize on this, how are you going to capitalize? So again, I think that uh I think that um this is a this is a tough situation for Arizona. This is a very tough situation for Arizona right now. And if you're Desiree Reed Francois, I don't know what you do exactly because again, you got a massive buyout, but you know, the problem is um the problem is uh I do think that uh you're just a I, I do think that you're uh, you're kind of at the stage now where people might not people just might not go to your games and you know in football football is king in this uh, football is king even at Arizona when it comes to revenue and if you don't have people going to your games then that is a massive massive problem and uh, you know I, I don't I don't I don't uh, I don't love the uh, picture now if you're Brent Brennan you've got to have wholesale ch- staff changes if you're back. And the first thing you got to do is you've got to get real offensive coordinators in here. Dino Babers was an absolute disaster. I mean, if an F isn't an F isn't uh, strong enough for it. Um, and uh, then uh, I think with uh, then when you've got a uh, you then when you've got you know Matt Adkins, I'm fine if you want to keep him at tight end, but you got to get a real play caller in here. You got to get a real quarterbacks coach in there because this was amateur hour this past year. It just wasn't good enough all the way across the board. Um, uh, Josh Oglesby has done nothing for me as an offensive line coach. As a matter of fact, I think he's been a, ter- I think he's been terrible. I like Alonzo Carter. I think Alonzo Carter is a good running backs coach. And I think he's done a pretty good do- job. Um, and then uh, um, I think that uh, I think you're kind of at the stage now where you're like, well, what's, what, what are you going to be able to do offensively? Now, I think defensively, I like what Dwayne Keene has been able to do, given all of the injuries. He's had a lot of games where Arizona's played well enough to win the game, and the offense just hasn't come through. Um, but again, if we're looking at uh, if we're looking at the the overall um, the overall health of this uh, program, it's not good. And you don't watch Brennan and say that that's a guy that uh, that's you don't watch Brennan and say that that's a guy that gets it. You just you don't really get that. uh, You don't really get that feeling at all. Now, you might say to yourself, well, how uh, what is the uh, what is the uh, uh, where are you at? uh, um, Where are you at now with as far as the balance between football and basketball? That's going to be an that's an interest. That's an interesting question that uh, I think somebody uh, that uh, somebody posed the other day. And we're going to get into that because um, and then we're going to get into, obviously, Arizona basketball. But first, but first. Five hour energy, five hour energy. Like you might want look at some of these teams and be like, oh man, they're uh, they look uh, tired out there. They don't look like they're uh, they're ready to go. Five Hour Energy says we could have helped them get with Five Hour Energy again. Here's the deal with Five Hour Energy as well. Five Hour Energy knows that no matter uh, what time you root for, uh, what team you root for, being a fan requires heart, soul, and a lot of energy. Whether you're prepping for the big tailgate or ironing out your jersey, your game day to-do list is always a mile long. That's why the limited edition stand, the Five Hour Energy Shot, is here to help keep you fueled throughout the season. What's your uh, fan fuel this week? Whatever it is, do it with Five Hour Energy. Available at FiveHourEnergy.com. Shipped nationwide. All right, now Five Hour Energy. That is where it's at. Also, check it out. Now, with
Thanks for keeping it locked on Wildcats and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. Okay, now uh, let's talk about the right energy or the right uh, balance between uh, football and basketball. We're going to get there. All right, now this is an interesting situation because basketball will always be the one that is near and dear to the hearts of Arizona uh, athletic fans, mainly because you've got a you got a program that uh, has been the best on the West Coast over the last 30 years, the last 40 years. Um, it is a national brand, uh, and it shows under Tommy Lloyd, it shows absolutely no uh, no uh, reasons to stop. And uh, not only does it show no reasons to stop, I think it also uh, – I think it's also um, – I think it's also kind of the, uh, you know – you feel pretty good about it. Sooner or later, it feels like Arizona is going to break through. And sooner or later, it feels like Tommy Lloyd is going to break through because Tommy Lloyd is a boss. He is a great coach. But football also, uh, uh, you know, football also brings in a lot of money. Now, if you're Desiree Reed Francois, um, and I think if you're Arizona basketball, your main concern is, I think if you're, your main, cons- your main concern is that you're, uh, you're kind of at the stage where, you do know that you're going to be able, you're going to have to come up with a, uh, um, you're going to have to come up with a situation that works best for pretty much everybody. And that is not ideal. Hold on just a second. Sorry about that. Person knocked on my door for like the third time. All right. Now, when it comes to uh, when it comes to, when it comes to Arizona uh, basketball, though, I think the thing that you're mostly concerned about is where are you then in the where you don't want money being siphoned away from football or from basketball to go to football. That is obviously a massive concern. You don't want that to ever occur. And you know, it, it, but also in all fairness, if you're an AD though and you make a hire, you're going to want to make a splash hire when it comes to football. And you're going to want to be able to put give put them in the best uh, situation possible. So that's something to keep in mind. Is that you know Brent Brennan, <laughs> and again, it's 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 definitely an odd thing to say, but Brent Brennan is probably not going to uh, demand a lot of uh, football funding just because I don't know that that's the way it is. When it's Arizona basketball, it is a totally different. Uh, with Arizona basketball, it is a totally different situation, and so there is a proper balance, but. You also need to be good. There's absolutely no reason that Arizona football can't be decent. And at least if you're going back, I mean, just look at it with the Rich Rod years where, you know, you would go seven or eight or uh, seven, um, you know, seven or uh, um, learn how, you know, you would go seven to win seven or eight games every fourth, fifth year, you'd have a good season. That to me is kind of the template. It's kind of the Dick Tomey template. Now, I think people have this misconception of Dick Tomey that he was this great all-time legendary coach. He was a solid coach here at the U of A. He wasn't great, but he was solid. He was good enough. Um, I do think that with, uh, with um, this squad though, or, you know, you just basically, you want to be competitive. And if you're competitive, that's pretty much good enough at that point. Now, Let's get to some Arizona basketball. Um, this is a this is a loaded roster. Uh, Tommy Lloyd has a loaded roster, and I think some of the questions that we've had in the past about certain you know players, where exactly uh, they fit in the grand scheme of things, there really isn't any of that that's missing. In the past, you had players that uh, in the past you had players that were you know these were good teams, but it also felt like a little bit of a smoke and mirrors type situation where you were. Um, you had players that just weren't quite good enough. Um, and they, you know, when the NCAA tournament came, they uh, weren't able to make plays off the bounce. Um, and that's kind of what happens. You need to be able to have uh, players, teams that when they get to, when they get the ball at the top of the key and that shot clock is winding down, they need to be able to get to the bucket. And Arizona really hasn't uh, really, there's been some years where Arizona didn't have that. I mean, heck, last year, uh, you could say that exact thing. You had a basically you had one player that uh, you had one player that, you know, was very, very, you know, that was very good um, in, uh, um, you know, in Caleb Love, but nobody else that could really make plays off the bounce this year. It's different. You've got guys that can make plays off the bounce. You've got guys that, you know, with a, uh, you know, a. Caleb Love, we already know what he can do. Jaden Bradley, when he's attacking the basket, Jaden Bradley is a problem for other teams. He is an absolute stud. We know that. And then you've also got, uh, you've also got, uh, um, excuse me, Trey Townsend, 
who I think is going to eliminate a lot of problems that Arizona might maybe had in the past because he can get you from mid-range. He can also get you from three-point or he can finish around the bucket. He is a uh, he is a peach of a player, and he's also battle tested, which is a big part in all of this. Is that none of this is going to overwhelm him because he's already been there before. He's been there, done that, got the T-shirt, and you see that against other you see that against other teams where he is able to just uh, you know where he's been able to just make plays. And um, I think that's going to be the case. Uh, I think that's going to be the case uh, next year or this year as well. I think you've got to feel really good about that aspect. Also, you got to be feel really good as- about the uh, toughness aspect that this squad has as well. There is a toughness in here that um, there is a toughness that I don't know that Arizona's had in the past. You've had some weenies in the past. Kirk Creasa talked a lot, but Kirk Creasa was also kind of a weenie. He wasn't a uh, he wasn't one of those dudes that you uh, you know when the chips were down that uh, he was going to be there. He liked to talk a lot. He liked to you know he liked to bark. But a lot of times there wasn't a ton of bite to that. And in the NCAA tournaments, you could say he was injured, whatever. He was basically three of 10,000. He wasn't good. And um, defensively, he obviously wasn't good either. Then you had Kylan Boswell, who was far more interested in partying his uh, um, his sophomore year here. And he ba- basically wasted a really good opportunity to be able to, you know, be a difference maker. But his mind was elsewhere. So those dudes were soft. I don't know what else to say. Those guys were soft. Jaden Bradley is not soft. Jaden Bradley is, uh, he's the guy that he's going to get the ball. He's going to take it downhill. He's going to look to get to the bucket. He's going to look to do a lot of different things. Jaden Bradley's a stud. And I think what you're also got to be excited about if you're a fan of Arizona is that he is a, uh, um, he is going to look to set the tempo defensively and then offensively. He's a lot better than people give him credit for. I think people have this idea, kind of this misconception of Jaden Bradley, that he's just this, uh, that he's just this, you know, guy who, you know, he's just kind of this, you know, this rigid, uh, stiff point guard. He can do a lot of things. And I think that's, what's exciting. If you're Arizona, you know, that he can do a lot of things and I'm excited to see what he can do, honestly, because there's a, I think there's every uh, every reason, every expectation to believe that this player could be an all conference type guy, especially defensively, because defensively, that's where he really makes his bones. I mean, you saw it in the Clemson game, you saw it, and that is going to set the tempo for everything. Because when you are in the uh, when you're in the Big Twelve, you've got to be tough, and not only do you have to be tough, you got to be able to have players that embrace big moments. And I think Jaden Bradley has more than shown that he embraces big moments. And I think that's got to be something that as an Arizona fan, you got to be pretty excited about. I know I am. And I think KJ Lewis fits right into that as well. You've got a lot of guys that are just tough. And, you know, I think that's been something that Arizona has been a little bit short on over the, uh, you know, the first three years, of the Tommy Lloyd era. Now, again, there have been tough guys for sure, but that's also been sprinkled in and out with some guys that aren't so tough. And this year's roster, you've got a lot of that. You've got a lot of that. And then even, you know, coming off the bench as well. But it's also, I think one of it's also going to be his deepest team. And I think that's something that is very enticing about where Arizona is, is the depth that Tommy Lloyd squad is going to have. And because, again, in the past, you kind of had some roster filler. You had some guys that just weren't that good or that could do some things, but you were just kind of hoping that they would be able to, you would just be able to get out of there with that game, you know, just uh, that game, just kind of in an okay situation, but that's not really what you're going for. You're looking to be able to push that lead. And this last the past year, this team, uh, this team just didn't really have that. Um, and, but this year, I think you're going to see, uh, you're going to see a little bit of a different situation. And we're going to talk about that coming up next. But first, FanDuel. FanDuel, check it out. FanDuel. All right, here's the deal. Hey, NFL fans, you can start this season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Visit FanDuel.com to look at odds, all kinds of stuff. Now, the great thing about it is when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, go to uh, check the latest stats. You can go to FanDuel, and they will help you with that. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets when you play your first a uh, live $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Again, college basketball is here, almost here. The NBA is here. The NFL is here. The uh, college football is here. FanDuel is the spot you want to be. Check it out at FanDuel.com. 
FanDuel.com. Again, this is a, they got all kinds of really good things going on there for you. FanDuel.com. Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats, and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right, now, 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 let's talk a little bit about uh, where uh, Arizona basketball is from a depth perspective. You got difference makers coming off the bench this year. You've got a guy in Carter Bryant who would not surprise me if he becomes a lottery pick. Watching him, he's super smooth, six foot eight. He can handle, he can get to the bucket. He can also pull up from mid range, which is something that you generally don't see with guys this age. He is really, really good Uh, and a difference maker. He might just be here one year. That's how good he is. Then you've got another guy in a, whether it's Tobey Awaka or Mount Crevis, either one, both of them are difference makers. Let's just say it's Awaka for this example. Awaka feels like every big man that's been to Houston. He comes in, he's 6'6", 225, 230 pounds, 6'7", and He's going to be a rebounding scorer. He's going to be tough. Arizona has lacked guys like him in the past. He is going to be, I think, a real difference maker for the University of Arizona. Um, And again, in the Big 12, you need toughness. Nastiness is required. How about that? Anthony Del Orso then. Del Orso is going to be fascinating for me because he's certainly not a great defensive player, but he hunts his shots. He hunts three-pointers, and that's what I want. With guys that can shoot, um, you know a guy that can shoot when they hunt their shots. And that is something that Anthony Del Orso really, really uh, specializes in doing. I'm excited to see what he can do because if he can, uh, if he can really become that, uh, if he can really become that next level guy for Arizona that you can depend on for 12 to 14 minutes where he's getting some threes, I think you feel pretty, I think you feel pretty darn good about really everything that is uh, everything that's going on then with the U of A at that point, because you would have, uh, you would have, uh, uh, you would have uh, figured out a lot of different things for Arizona. Then obviously you've got, uh, you've got those guys. Now, Henry, Henry Vasar, talk about a unwelcome or a, uh, a unexpected, but very welcome addition of Henry Vasar is that dude for Arizona um, six foot. Obviously he's a tall guy. Six foot eleven or so, um, seven foot maybe can block shots, can run the court, and he's making threes. He would be a very unexpected but very welcome addition to this uh, Arizona roster. Excited to see what he can do because so far you've seen a guy that um, you've seen a guy that is showing some confidence in his game. But now, can he get to that next level? Can he get to that next level where? You're counting on him, and he's playing 8 to 12 minutes per game because if you can get to that level, then you're really, really dealing with something that could be very, very beneficial for the U of A. Um, So there's – I mean, you've got a nice, no matter how you look at it, nice 8 to 9-man rotation, and all of those guys I think are good enough to kind of force their way onto the court. Um, then obviously people ask about, well, you know, what's the deal with Emmanuel Stefan? I would redshirt Emmanuel Stefan. I believe that he is going to be redshirted. If he takes his time, I think he is going to be a good, good player here. The guy, there's just too many guys in front of him right now, and he's just a little too. I mean, he's he's young. He was a fringe 100 player, but I think he's got really good upside. He's got a massive upper body and little skinny legs, so you got to work on that, obviously. But Stefan can play. Stefan's going to be a player for the U of A, and I think that that is somebody that we should that Arizona fans should all be excited about. And then after that, you've obviously got. Uh, you've got Conrad Martinez. Martinez has looked good. You can tell he's going to be a fan favorite. I just don't know that I see him being able to play in Big 12 games. Maybe you steal a couple minutes here, a couple minutes there. I don't know. But either way, Arizona basketball is in very, very good shape. We should all be very happy about where Arizona is. And Tommy Lloyd has done a great job. Has he been perfect? No. But overall, this has been an A performance through three years for the U of A. He's done a very, very nice job here at the U of A. Um, Football, it's obviously a, a different uh, situation. Brennan so far has been a disaster. It's This has been an F season. I don't know how else to put it. And I don't know that you watch him and you say that there's a lot of hope for the future either. But you got to, you know, it's up to Desiree Reed Francois to be able to find that right balance. But I think with, uh, I think right now, Arizona basketball is cooking and you got to feel really, really good about where Arizona basketball is. Arizona football is a different situation. Okay, now. After the uh, UCF game, Arizona UCF, we will be on here with the post game. Um, yeah, hopefully, Arizona can win this game, get back on the right track. 
they're almost a touchdown underdog. That's never uh, never a good sign, especially too when you're traveling across the country. So we will certainly see how that one does play out. But overall, football been a massive disappointment. Arizona basketball, though, is going to be very, very good. And we should all be very, very excited about it. Um, so there's that. But like I said, we will be back with you on the post game on uh, Saturday. And like I said, Arizona basketball, first game of the season against Canisius on a Monday as well. We'll be getting you ready for that one. But as always, thanks for keeping it locked on Wildcats and making this your first listen of the day. I'm your host, Mike Luke. Bear down, back the A, and we will be back with you.